Hi guys, got a new video here for you today. Just picked up a brand new FX Maverick. I've been waiting since uh, last year to get my hands on one of these and picked it up today and I thought I'd give you a little overview and a look at what you get in the box. Right, this is the box my one came in. It's the impact size box uh, with the flip up latches. I've seen a few others um, on YouTube that come in the Wildcat style box which is a little smaller and looks a little more flimsy so I'm, I'm really pleased I, my one came in this case right let's take a look at what we get inside obviously the gun but we've got the manual owner's manual is um, specific for the Maverick so it tells you about setting the triggers and um, adjusting the regulators and stuff so well worth a little read also get a magazine um, for your calibre, this is a 177 and a quick fill foster fitting. And finally, my one came with a moderator. Unfortunately it can't the rifle can't fit in the box with the moderator screwed in, so you have to take it off every time you get it out of the case. A bit annoying but not a huge deal. They do do a compact version of this rifle uh, with a smaller shroud so that might fit in the box with the uh, moderator on, I'm not sure. Right, let's take it out of the box and get you a closer look. Right, so here's the rifle. Um, I opted for a 177 in the standard length shroud. Um, for those of you who don't know, they do a standard a compact which is the same exact gun except it's got a smaller 300cc bottle and a shorter shroud and they also do a sniper version which is a longer barrel and the bigger 580 bottle but I believe that's for FAC only and this is obviously a sub 12 rifle. Right so the big draw of the Maverick is the dual regulators has one regulator in here in the bottle adapter and one at the end here. So the advantage of a dual regulated setup is that it limits the pressure variations that the final reg will see. For example, an FX crown, the regulator would be forced to deal with the whole pressure variation from 250, your bottle fill, all the way down to your regulator pressure. By adding a second regulator, what you are effectively doing is limiting the pressure that the rear regulator will see to a set pressure. FX recommend that you set the front regulator 20 to 30 bar above the rear regulator. What this will do is help level out the shot string and should result in a more consistent rifle as the regulator at the back here only has to deal with a very small amount of pressure difference. My initial testings have been quite good. Um, I've done about five or six shot strings and all of them have been between 16 and 20 feet per second spread over an entire magazine. I would call that quite good. Um, hopefully as we shoot the rifle more the regs should bed in and that should get even better. On this rifle the front reg was set at about 80 bar and the rear one here was set 50. Out of the box, straight from Sportsman's Gun Centre, this rifle was shooting at about 10.8 foot pounds to 11. So a little on the low side, but I'd prefer it low than high. But even at 11 foot pounds, this gun was shooting fine. Now I'll bring you in a bit closer and we can talk about the main difference between a sub 12 and a FAC version of the Maverick. Okay. So, in the sub-12 variant, the power plenum has been reversed. On an FAC rifle, this section would be here, and this section would be here. Since a sub-12 rifle doesn't need a very large plenum, FX has swapped the chambers round. What this does is give us another section of air reservoir. Sportsman's Gun Centre quote 600 shots on their website, and it wouldn't surprise me as we've got the whole 480ccs of the bottle and an extra 89ccs of air in the second reservoir. 
I haven't tested the shot count properly yet, but from my tests with the chronograph, I used a very small amount of air. So I believe that 600 shots is probably achievable out of this rifle. However, I'll be testing that at a later date. Next up, we'll talk about the rail. Now, the rail on this rifle is neutral. It has no MOA adjustment. What this means is the scope rail is parallel to the barrel. Now the general consensus is that a 20 MOA adjustment in the rail is beneficial for both FAC at long ranges and for sub 12 at around 50 yards. However, as I'm using the FX No Limits rings, I can simply put 20 MOA into the scope rings. All this adjustment does is stop you from running out of scope elevation at the longer ranges. Okay, like most modern FX rifles, you can change calibers and bottles quite easily. Bottles just unscrew so you can have either multiple of the same size or you can have biggers, bigger ones, smaller ones, that sort of thing. And you can change calibers easily. Underneath the cheek piece, there is one grub screw holding the barrel in. You can take the cheek piece off, unscrew that grub screw and pull the barrel out the front. If you were changing from 177 to 22, you'd also need a 22 pellet probe. And like a lot of other FX rifles, you can change the power easily at the back here with a power adjuster wheel. It's got seven settings, with seven being max and one being minimum. You also have the adjustment there, which you can take a 1.5mm Allen key and change the power. And the Maverick uses the same high capacity magazine that the Crown, the Dreamtack and the Wildcat use. Uh, 22 shots in 177. It's quite nice there. Cycles nicely, no problems. Also, the Maverick uses the same pistol grip and butt pad as the Impact. So any pistol grips or butt pads you've bought for your Impact, you can swap straight onto the Maverick. Right, that's a lot of the general information out of the way. Um, I'll move on to what I like, what I don't like about the rifle. So I'll start with the negatives. Okay, so first of all, like the impact, the length of pull of this rifle is too short for me. I need an extra at least two inches on the back to get it in my shoulder when it's on the bench. I had the same problem with the impact and I have it with this rifle as well. So for me, an extended butt pad or an adjustable butt pad is a necessity. Now, I'm six foot two, so you might not have the same problem, but my dad, who's a bit shorter than me, still struggles. It's not as bad for him, but even he needs an extension on the back. Similarly, the grip feels way too narrow for me. It's the same one they use on the Impact and I just can't get along with it. I bought a thicker one for my Impact and the difference was very noticeable. Much more comfortable to shoot and it was just a nicer rifle to handle all around. So I'm definitely going to do this for the Maverick. Next is the cocking and the action noise. If you've ever cocked a wildcat, you know what I mean. The cocking feels a little awkward and is a little on the vague side. I wouldn't say it's a bad gun to cock, but it isn't as nice as some of the other models. It doesn't feel as polished or refined as something like a crown or an impact. And when you're firing the rifle, you do hear quite a bit of banging and rattling around in the action. Now, there's nothing wrong with a rifle, but it does feel a bit agricultural in its use. Now, while we're talking about the cocking, I will mention on my rifle, I was having some feed issues when I was shooting the rifle. What was happening was I was noticing it was very difficult to press the pellet into the barrel. I managed to narrow it down to the magazine hitting the cheek piece. What the cheek piece was doing was just not allowing the magazine to go all the way in. It was holding it a little bit away, which was causing the magazine to be misaligned with the barrel. FX have changed the manufacturing of the cheek piece. It's now a 
injection molded piece instead of a Delrin machine piece. So all I can think is this one's a little warped and is not allowing the magazine to go all the way in. I've contacted Sports Guns and they've said they're going to look into it for us. It's not a big deal. I could just file a little bit out of the cheek piece to make it work. It's not a whole deal, but I thought I'd wait and see what they have to say before I take a file to it. Right, that's about it for the negatives. So I'll start talking about stuff I do like. I do like the dual reg system. If you're like me and like to have a tinker and a play around with different settings, then this is definitely a rifle for you. I can see a lot of experimentation in the future with different settings on the regs to see what works best, which is half of the fun for me. I do like to have a bit of a play around with the guns and see what I can get them to do. Next is the trigger. It's got a very nice trigger on this. The first stage is a bit long, but I can adjust that out, but it breaks very cleanly. It's got a nice second stage to it. Just bump it up against the second stage and that last bit of movement fires a rifle. It is a nice two stage trigger. It's not all spongy and horrible. As I said, the first stage is a little long, but I can sort that out with some adjustment. Another plus is the big shot count. With the two regs and the air cylinder in the middle here, this is going to be a really good gun for efficiency. FX quotes 600 shots out of a 177. Um, I saw a bloke on Facebook who claimed he got 900 shots out of a 2.2 version, which is fantastic if it's true, and it seems to be pretty accurate. The ranges are still closed at the moment in the UK, so I can't do a proper accuracy test, but at the 20 to 25 yards I've got in the garden, it seems to be shooting well. And finally, with the long shroud and the moderator, it is pretty quiet. I'll probably make myself another mod for it to make it even quieter, but this setup from the factory is plenty quiet enough for garden use. Right, that's about it from me guys. I'll get you some close-ups and a, a look over the gun, and then we'll call it good. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Right, so I'll give you some close-ups of the various bits and pieces about the rifle. So at the front there, we have the moderator, and the shroud, Underneath that's the standard 500mm STX liner system barrel that FX use. There's the 480 bottle. has the same bottle adapter that's present on the DreamTac with the same quick fill on the side there. It does have a little short Picatinny rail for your bipods. This is a nice Accutec one. I'm going to be doing a video on that in the near future. A little back from there. That's our trigger, standard FX style trigger, quite nice, with the adjustable blade on it. On this side we can see some of the cocking linkage, I'll get you a close up of the other side in a minute. Above that, there's the rail. The FX scope rings on there, with our Vortex um, Diamondback Tactical on the top. OK, so this section here is regulated by regulator number one and that's housed in the bottle adapter and is adjusted from underneath. There's a small hole in the Picatinny rail at the bottom here which you can get a 2.5mm Allen key in and adjust. The second regulator is housed in this part here and it controls the final pressure that the back of the valve will see. That's the regulator gauge there, so this one tells you what pressure is in this part here. FX have already put out a video on how to adjust the reg pressure, so I won't go over it in this video. Up here we have the cheek piece, slightly softer than previous models, as I said before it's injection moulded. And then at the very back we have the power adjuster and the butt pad. It's a harder plastic this one, um, I'm not too keen on it if I'm honest, I prefer the rubberized style one. I like the holes in the side but the rubber one just feels a bit better. And finally the chassis which has the FX Maverick logo on it. Right, so I'll swap the rifle round and show you the other side. 
Okay, so here's the other side. This gauge here reads the pressure that's in the bottle. So there isn't a pressure gauge on the first regulator system. You have to do a bit of jiggery pokery with the rear reg to see what it's set at. But FX do have a video on this and it's quite easy to tell what pressure the first reg is set at. So here's the other side of the cocker linkage. See that pops open there. Comes back and your probe moves obviously to index the magazine. It's not like the Wildcat Mark 1s, it has no um, mechanical magazine. They all use the side shot magazines now, so no indexing arm or anything like that. This is the second regulator, or the final regulator. This one, as I said before, controls the pressure that's on the back of the valve. And there we are. Back here. Safety. will only go fully in safe when the rifle's cocked, so it's on fire or safe. Okay, so my final thoughts on the rifle. It's quite nice. There's no problems with it. The dual regulator system I really like. I think that's going to be good to have a play around with and have a look. However, there are still some little niggly things that I'd like worked out, like the magazine hitting the cheek piece. Also, I'm not sure if it's just this rifle or not, but the general fit and finish isn't the same quality as some of the other FX models. There's a few edges that have been missed on the deburring section, such as this one here. This is quite sharp. And there are a couple things that don't fit as nicely as I think they should. But apart from that, it's a nice little rifle. Alright then guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.